This is an example of moralizing rudeness. Is being rude morally wrong? I think that is a very difficult question to answer. If you think good people are people who always act correctly, right? I think good people often act incorrectly, but with good intentions. I think most people have good intentions. And when I say most, I mean, we're talking about billions of billions of billions of people, guys. So remember, like, you are, if you're on the internet, probably observing and consuming the worst of the worst. Or you're learning about historical, like, you know, just atrocities. And you're learning just about the worst people in the world. But they don't represent billions of billions of billions of billions of people. All of us who will never be remembered. All of us who just go about our life doing regular, mundane, boring ass things. And then we die and history doesn't remember us because we didn't slaughter a whole country. And we didn't, you know, you know, somehow cause a ruckus in the history books. Like us, regular people, us, us. Okay. We need to decide in our limited time on earth, are we going to moralize rudeness? And like, what does that mean? So I do think sometimes it could be immoral to be rude. But more than that, I think sometimes it's just inappropriate. I think it's inappropriate, but also could be about setting boundaries. Example, Bill Maher and Steve-O. So Steve-O I've been watching since I was a kid from Jackass. And Bill Maher I've been watching since I was a kid because of politics. And I'm not a Bill Maher fan anymore, and I don't really consume a lot of Jackass content anymore, you know, but I like Steve-O. I've liked seeing his sobriety journey. I've liked Bill Maher over the years and liked him less. I just think Bill Maher's kind of so in the bubble that he's just kind of boring, but I can see the appeal for people in the bubble and why they would like him. And I think everyone lives in bubbles. I think I live in a bubble and you live in a bubble and bubble is perception. So Bill Maher lives in this bubble where his perception only goes so far. You know, imagine it like a little, like a scanning system in your brain. And what you see is what you understand. And that forms the bubble. So Steve-O was asked to be on Bill Maher. Okay. And he asked Bill Maher not to smoke weed while he was on the show because he's sober 16 years. And Bill Maher, who infamously smokes the show, even around pregnant women, Candace Owens, uh, refused. And Steve-O was kind of shocked. Like, you invited me on your show. You know I'm sober. I know you want to smoke weed. Love that for you. But also, I can't be around it. And it was interesting, the discourse around this. Who was rude? Was Steve-O rude for not being able to control himself around substances? Was Bill Maher rude for denying him, you know, this request, even though he invited him onto the show? I mean, ultimately, it's a cultural issue. But was what was really interesting were the comments. There were so many former... Oh, I guess I could say addicts, depending on how what bubble you fall into. Some people call it formal, formal addicts. Some people leave once an addict, always an addict. But some people who are also sober were saying that it's not Bill Maher's job to cater to Steve-O's boundaries or limitations. And though I think that's true, it felt a little bit like pick me, like a little bit like sobriety pick me. Like I used to be a drug addict, but pff, I don't need people to change their life around me. And it's like, no one's asking Bill Maher to change his life around Steve-O. We're saying, yes, this guest is willing to come on the show, but the guest has a request based off of something that they're, they are they suffer from. It's kind of, you know, it's like about showing respect to the, to the cultural difference. It's about showing sort of an awareness of the consciousness you're inviting into your sphere, into your bubble. If I invited a vegan into my home and then I serve them pork, would I not be rude, uncontrollably? That'd be so rude. And I'm the one who invited the vegan in. And the vegan said yes. And the vegan could have brought their own food, but I promised I would cook for them knowing they're a vegan. So it is up to me as the responsible person to be aware of who I'm inviting to dinner and who I'm volunteering my space to, right? So it's like, yeah, you don't have to do this. But also I'm kind of surprised because where I come from, it would be considered super, super rude. But obviously, Bill Maher is allowed to be rude. I don't think being rude means you're a bad person. I just think it means you're un un unwilling to create a cohesive environment for people that differ from you. I mean, I'm a rude person. You're a rude person. Everyone's been rude. Now, I'm not inherently rude. I'm not rude all the time, but I'm not perfect. And also, I think sometimes it's okay to be rude. 
I think there are opportunities in which it is okay to be rude, but also the ideal is that we're not rude. But I also think rudeness is going to be inherent to people that are easily offended. So the difference is like, which conversation situation are we even talking about, right? If you're defending yourself, it can be through rudeness. If you're just being rude to be rude, if you're trying to be cruel, so you're using rudeness to do it, I think this is why intentionality is so important to me because that would change things. Is Bill Maher trying to be rude to Steve-O because he thinks steve a loser who can't stay sober around weed and therefore he's like a loser? Or is he more like, oh man, I'd love you on the show, but I cannot smoke weed for an hour of my show. It's like, I gotta do it. Which is interesting because I gotta know, is Bill Maher addicted to weed, bro? Is he like dependent on weed? Because like super interesting. I've seen drinking shows or drinking podcasts that will, if the guest is a sober guest, will drink non-alcoholic drinks. They'll, they'll be aware of the guest. And I think that's interesting, isn't it? Like I wonder what Bill Maher's thought process is. Um, okay, let me see. Ingrid says, I used to, not long ago, held so much internalized shame for being a rude person. And that's why it used to be, it used to really hurt my feelings that people would call me rude. I do think rudeness is a bubble perspective. And I do admit that I am rude sometimes. And often I'm willing to be rude, especially when I'm being cheeky. And I'm rude often in my videos. And usually, especially to people that I find really rude. Like I tend to be rude back. You know what I mean? But ideally, obviously, we would be like, I'm not going to be rude just because you're being rude. But also sometimes, God, it's fun, bro. But it's the people that moralize rudeness that act like, oh, he isn't being rude. He's being honest. He isn't being rude. He's being blunt. Oh, he isn't being rude. He's telling you the truth. I heard that a lot growing up. I'm not being rude. I'm stating a fact. No, you're not, bitch. You're not stating a fact. And even if you are, you're rude. Oh, I'm not being rude. I'm just, I'm misgendering them because it's a fact that they can't be a woman and they can't be a man. So I am, I am not being rude. I'm stating a fact. You're being rude, dude. You know, I talk a lot of shit about religious people on my channel, but I don't go to religious bubbles and make fun of them, bro. I'm not sitting there going to a fucking mosque or going to a church and disrespecting them, bro. That's fucking rude. And it's rude to a standard I won't tolerate, right? It's, it's, there's a tolerance of rudeness that's allowed. I can be rude on my own channel, but I'm not going to go to someone's house, bro, and be rude. That's really fucked up. So there is a line in which I think being rude is appropriate. And then being rude is just being like obnoxiously rude. Like you're coming in, you're mocking your own guest. Like, what are you doing? That's like me inviting somebody onto my stream and being rude to them after I invited them into my space. It's like, why am I doing that? Or somebody getting invited onto my show and they're ruthlessly rude to me for no reason. Like, what are you doing? It's one thing for us to be rude on our own streams. And then maybe we can negotiate what rudeness would look like together. I know some people get criticism for this. Like, why are you so nice to that person when you talk to them? Well, because, you know, there's like a level of like civility that I think is necessary. Unless we're admitting that we're both willing to be rude to each other's faces, which I consent to. Right? Like, it's a consent issue. Balto says, isn't rudeness an inherently negative thing by definition? I think a better question is when it is appropriate to be rude or whether it's oh, not, wait, or whether or not it's okay depending on the scenario. Right. Mm -hmm. Hannah says, it's not Bill's job to change his behavior for another person, but he could consider be considerate of the guest. Ultimately, yeah, I want to know where consideration plays a role in this, right? I'm happy to be considerate, but I also am not afraid to be rude. But I do think people think rudeness is also like, I'm just telling a fact, bro. It's just true. Like being fat is unhealthy. So I get to make fun of you and shame you. And shame and rudeness ha are like sisters. There's also this idea that like, I'm not shaming you. And I'm like, you're shaming them, bro. Like, I don't want to moralize this. Like shame and rudeness are usually part of social constructs to move people out of bad behavior or into bad behavior. And I don't think they're always and mostly efficient, but I think sometimes people use them as like a defense mechanism. You know, it's interesting. Like it's sort of interesting. The the way people are so rude and so shamey, but they're like, I'm not shaming you. I'm just, I'm stating a fact. I'm not being rude to you. I'm stating a fact. And I'm like, 
you know, you can state a fact and still be rude, bro. You can state a fact and still shame somebody. It's, like, interesting that they want the ability to, like, poke at you without the responsibility of being labeled rude or shameful. You know what I mean? Lexi says, I think being rude on purpose is bad. Being rude on accident in an autistic way is fine as long as you try to correct your behavior once you find out that you did something rude. Mmm. Interesting. Maiden says, why can't he just smoke right before the show? The high should last. Weird. I, I don't know. Like, that's the part that's so confusing. Yeah, Steve-O's sober 16 years. Now, I understand it's difficult. It must be hard as a sober person, like, having to miss out on opportunities because you can't be around that drug of substance or that drug of substance, that drug of addiction or the substance of – what am I trying to say? That, like, drug or substance that's going to impact you in a negative way. That must suck. Like, that must be really difficult because I'm sure Steve-O wanted to go on the show, but not at the expense of his sobriety, you know? Bryson says shame and rudeness are sisters, but they ain't fucking as often as pride and ego. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You know. Tefka says telling the truth and being rude aren't mutually exclusive. People can express truth rudely or politely and anything in between. Agree. You know. Which is exactly why I'm not opposed to anyone to have like being rude appropriately. Like I infamously like my mother is like infamously rude because she can't help it. Like she just has to if it's in her mind, she has to say it. She feels like it's her moral obligation. She just I have to say it. I, I know I know it's rude, but I have to like she's aware it's rude, but she has to also say it because like it's a part of her own thing. So like if she's like around a gay person or like see something, she has to say like but not to like literal strangers on the street. My mom's not that socially inept. It's more like if I if like somebody was in her mutual circle and she's like, I just got to mention like, you know, you can come to the church if you'd like or she knows it's rude, but she also tries to do it in a nice way. But I do still think it's rude, like leave the gays alone. But also she feels like it's her obligation as like a follower of Christ. You know what I mean? So I do think sometimes you should keep your thoughts to your fucking self. And I think sometimes it's about reading the room, which I know is really difficult when your morals feel like they're being challenged or maybe you're autistic. Like I know for a fact it is very hard for people with a lot of conviction to feel like they, they, they to feel like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta say something. I gotta say something. So they have really good intentions, but I think sometimes they should learn to keep their mouth fucking shut. And same with the autists. Like you might mean nothing by it, but regardless, it's rude. Shut the fuck up. Shh. Be quiet. Be quiet. But also, I think people have a hard time knowing, you know, if I don't speak up and say something, am I pussying out? Am I not standing up for myself? Should Stevo have stood up for himself? Some people were upset that Stevo made a big deal out of this or any deal at all because they felt like, why are you mentioning this? Like, who cares that like Bill Maher wouldn't smoke like or stop smoking? Like, you don't need to be on his show. And Steve was like, well, I was invited. And I just think it's weird because Steve was saying, hey, like, I'm noticing like you're being weird. And Bill Maher's like, you're being weird. And then people are like, you're being weird and you're being weird and you're being weird. And I'm like, everyone thinks the other person is weird if you're outside the bubble because there's an expectation of behavior. And then there's a hierarchy of like, well, I'm sober, but I can be around weed. I'm sober, but I can be around, you know, alcohol. And then it becomes a hierarchy of pick me competition of like, well, if you really were in control of your sobriety, you could be around the substance. And it's like, well, you know, no drunk per or no alcoholic, no drug addict, no anyone should ever be around any other substance or, oh my gosh, like no person who's ever been an addict should ever engage in drugs, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, it just depends on the context, the bubble, the expectation of behavior and your goal moving forward. So it's kind of cool that Steve-O stood up for his sobriety. I think that's really says something about his discipline and his values. I think it's good that Bill Maher stood his ground and said, I'm not going to change my show just for a guest. I think it sucks that neither of them, who are two grown people, could have come to a consensus and made a good show happen. But that's life, isn't it? Two grown men who are both standing their ground can't figure out a way to stifle the conflict in order to have a conversation. And you all want to solve world peace. And you all want to solve world peace. Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Bryson says, my mom taught us if we didn't have anything nice to say, be, to be quiet. And I really internalize that shit. I think you should. 
I think if the safe if the space is safe and you can say it, that's fine. But I do think it's important to know when you're being appropriate or inappropriate. You know what I mean? And I do think it matters. But also, you know, people aren't perfect and sometimes you will create the conflict regardless. <laughs> Ingrid says, should I always be quiet then? I mean, if you're always rude when you speak, you're not always rude when you speak, right? Nobody is, well, if you are constantly rude when you speak, you should shut the fuck up. Like, obviously. But you're not, like, Ingrid, I don't know if you're making a joke, but like you yourself are not obviously rude every time you speak. You're just often rude. But sometimes it feels like you're doing it on purpose, which is is you stating an opinion, but also sometimes like, and I could say the same thing about myself. Sometimes I stop myself. I do. You see me do it on stream where I'm going to say something and I'm like, because the rudeness threshold is too much. And that's a self-control thing because ultimately, but also you don't want to people please to such an extent or not be rude to such an extent that you suffer your own values. But again, sometimes your values suck. You know, I don't want to hear the religious people yap their brains out every time they see a gay person. Shush. I don't want to see the pro-lifers in front of abortion clinics all the time. Shush. I don't want to see the progressives yelling at the religious people. Shush. Be quiet. But also... Context, nuance, you know, Ingrid says, I can't tell what I'm being rude. You need to extrospect. That's extrospection, right? Like that's what extrospection will get you. It's an understanding of, you know, and it's empathy, right? It's like, would, is this a nice thing to say to somebody? Right? Like ultimately, if you get your feelings hurt because people call you rude, how do you think other people feel when you're being rude to them? It's the same thing. Like it feels bad. And the question is, are you willing to extrospect enough to consider people might feel bad? And also, are you also willing to accept all of us that we're sometimes going to make people feel bad and it can't be helped? I really would love to live in a world where I didn't make people feel bad. But also, I know my existence alone makes people feel bad. So that's why I say pick your content creator smartly. Choose your bubbles wisely. Make sure you as an adult are making a decision about where do I want to live? Who do I want to socialize with? What bubble do I want to live in? So I can harm reduce and I can bring more joy into the world slash into my life. You know, it's not immoral. You're not like the worst person ever that you're rude sometimes. But I do think if you're not willing to consider people's feelings, you are less likely to be a part of a community that can like vibe with you unless you're in a community of people like that, you know? So it's up to you, the individual, it's up to all of us to decide how do we want to socialize? What should be the expectations, you know? Kay says, extrospect enough to notice what stuff you say hurts people and notice the pattern in those statements. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And pay attention to when people call you rude. That's them giving you a tool. Oh, hold on. Someone just said I'm rude. Let me write it down and notice what times people say I'm rude. And then I can decide if I'm going to be rude anyways. You know? Ingrid says I have a social deficit. I extrospect as much as I can, but there's only so much I can do. That's enough then. Then you're doing enough. As long as we're all doing our best, good enough. You're doing great. Good enough. You know, Nova says, are they able to introspect enough to realize they're in the wrong? Also, extrospection for some of us has to be asking people if we are rude or if they're mad or upset daily. Mm. Mm. Cases, people telling you you're rude is feedback. Exactly. Like the bubbles will give you feedback. Even this. This has been so interesting to read the comments. I wonder if any of the comments show up on this. See, God forbid a grown man refrain from smoking weed for a few hours to accommodate a former addict. Good for Steve-O. His personal health and well-being is more important than the interview. And then, um, you know, all of this is like really nice. But then I read, I wonder if any of this, there was a comment, like there were so many comments I saw that were basically anti-Steve-O. But this feels very pro-Steve-O. Oh, this one. Part of sobriety is understanding other people's lives don't stop because you've made a significant change. Yes. 
But what does it have to do with the context of this situation, right? What does this statement have to do with a, a show asking a guest to come on and then not accommodating? Isn't that interesting? So it's interesting. And then this person says, what people don't realize is cannabis is medicine for many. For them, it's not about sobriety. So eat an edible. If you need the weed for medical reasons, eat the edible. That way Steve-O doesn't have to be around the smell and around the smoke. Your sobriety is not his sobriety. He doesn't have to stop anything. For sure, bro. But why ask him on? And also, like, why are you shocked that he's, like, a little upset? Because why can't two grown men figure out a way to do one fucking podcast together? Because they won't compromise. Because literally, it's not worth it to them. Isn't that interesting? Mikey, membership for two months, let's go, says, so what instances is it okay to be rude? Like serious or unserious rudeness? <sighs> well, what is rudeness, right? Here, before I give my definition, I like to Google. Okay, yeah. Rudeness, a lack of manners, right? Okay, so rudeness is like a lack of manners. Example. One of the examples I like to give is I think it's incredibly rude to like burp or fart, generally speaking, in front of a crowd of people, on the phone with somebody, whatever else. Like, do I totally like burp in front of my siblings? And then everyone goes, you're so rude. And I go, yep. And it was rude. It was like rude to do it, right? I think of it like that. I think, you know, like if you're at a dinner table and you just like fart, I think you're being fucking rude. You're not being an evil person. You're not graping somebody. You're not like genociding a whole country. You're just being rude. And if you're rude enough, you're not coming, you're not getting invited back to dinner, right? So like if I had a friend that I invited to group dinners and every time they came over, they ripped huge ass farts and it just smelled so bad and nobody wanted to be around them, I would stop inviting them to dinners. You're not allowed to come. And they'd say, why? I'm just farting. What's the big deal? It's like a human thing. Like all humans fart. Yes, but you're being rude and you're making the environment less enjoyable for most of the people here, if not all of them. You know? So it's like, okay. <laughs> Bryson says some farts do be low-key genocidal. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I knew a guy. No, I didn't even know a guy. Oh, God, I'm so embarrassed. I dated a guy once and his friends were like mortified and I was mortified. I dated a guy once who's like farts didn't smell, but they were so loud and he would fart all the time. And I'm like, you need to stop or we're breaking up. This is gross. And he was like, but they don't smell. I was like, but you're being rude. Like you're being gross. And all his friends would be like, dude, you're ruining the mood for literally everybody. And he didn't get it. Like he refused and they were so loud. And I was like, I'm embarrassed. You're embarrassing me. I don't even want to tell the story to YouTube, but that's how embarrassed I am. Cause it's just so gross. It's like so beyond necessary. And, and he just did it. And all his friends were like, bro. So again, like you can fart. You're not fucking Hitler if you fart, but bro, you gassing this place up and I am questioning your intentions. So yes, Nobody gives a fuck if you fart, bro. But if you keep farting, we're breaking up. Like, we're not dating. You know? You can't come over to the, the, the cookouts. You can't come. You know what I mean? Like, you cannot come over. And then the question is, oh, my God, are you going to uninvite your friend or break up with a person because they fart? You bet your ass. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But do I have brothers? <sighs> Does Brittany have brothers? I have eight of them. And growing up, did my brothers absolutely fart in the car, press the child lock, and let none of us lower down the windows? Absolutely. Did my brothers run at me, jump, fart, and run away? Absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> Blair says Bill Maher farted on Steve O's sobriety. Absolutely. TMM in the chat. What's up? Do you know what I'm saying? Did I grow up with brothers that burped and farted and were gross? Yes. Actually, ooh, I'll, ooh. Mm-hmm. I got stories. 
But it's rude, bro. It is rude. Like, nothing stops the rudeness. It's all rude. You know? Um. Okay, okay. Puggy says, would it still be rude if the person has a medical condition that causes constant farting? Yes. I think it would still be rude. But they have less of a control over it. Like, even... Let's say you have autism and, like, you're making a statement. You're still being rude. You just don't have the intentionality behind it. Like, the reason I say, oh, I think he's autistic is to say I don't think he's intentionally being rude, but he is being rude. Like, when, I, when I'm not making an excuse for the behavior, I'm just saying he doesn't, he's not trying to be rude. It's literally just the way he talks. But he is being rude whether he intends to be or not. Like, your intentionality doesn't change the outcome or the perception of the outcome. Right? And I think that, again, there's a morals or values difference. You know how many couples are like, you're not even, are you even married if you haven't pooped in front of your partner? And I'm like, yes. I am married. And we're not pooping in front of each other, no matter how much you all weirdos try to make me do it. Are you even married if you haven't seen your partner poop? Are you even married if you haven't been brushing your teeth while your partner is pooping next to you? Good for you guys, but I don't want to be in that bubble. Like, good for you guys, but I do not want to be in the bubble. But you know what? Like, I'm not shaming them. They're not morally evil. They're not morally wrong. I just think it's gross. Okay? But there's a whole bubble of couples... That literally will say, I don't even know if you trust your partner or know your partner unless you've pooped in front of them. And I'm like, I, you know, you know what I mean? Like, but again, you do you, whatever works. Like I heard in Japan, I could be wrong that even like sneezing or burping, like you're not supposed to mention it because it's so rude. You're not even supposed to say, excuse me. Like you're supposed to pre pretend it never happened. I don't know if that's actually true. I just saw like a, like a TikTok on it probably. I don't remember where I saw it. But I was trying to think about, oh, like if you're in Japan, like in America, if you sneeze or fart or burp and you don't say, excuse me, or something to that extent, like in some bubbles, it's rude. But in Japan, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I read the article wrong or saw the TikTok wrong or whatever it is, acknowledging it is what's rude. And so I think that's interesting. Like every bubble is going to have their own relationship with rudeness, expectation of behavior, what should be expected of people, you know? So again, using Bill Maher and Steve-O to have the conversation, when I call people rude, I'm not saying I am also not rude. Even when I say like you're being so condescending, it doesn't mean I'm never condescending. No, I've noticed a pattern in, in commenters, not my commenters, but you know, if I'm covering a YouTuber, their audience will come in and they'll be like, you're so condescending too. And I'm like, okay, never said I wasn't. They're like, oh my God, you're so rude too. And I was like, never said I wasn't. I'm just saying that's why we're annoyed with you because you're rude in a way that like doesn't vibe with our version of rude. Or you're condescending in a way that doesn't vibe with us. I'm not moralizing it. You're moralizing it. I'm saying it's it's saying it doesn't matter. I'm not saying you're an evil person. I'm just saying that's why people aren't vibing with you, bro. All I'm trying to say is good people don't always vibe. I'm trying to say Bill Maher is being rude. And in some bubbles, steve is being rude. And every time you notice yourself taking a side on a story... Every time you notice yourself moving in a direction, every time you notice, use this all as tools to know yourself. What bubble am I in? What am I vibing with? Where do I feel the most, you know, not rude? Or maybe you want to be more rude? You know? Okay, Discord just sent a video called The Fart Walk. And I don't know what this is, hashtag fart walk, but I'm not clicking on that if it's just a person farting. Gross. Okay? Everybody farts. It's not about not farting. It's about subjecting people to your rudeness. Just because you don't think it, it's rude doesn't mean it's not rude. Just because it's rude doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just because it's true doesn't mean you need to say it out loud. It just depends on the context of the situation. Okay? What is the context? 
Maiden says in some cultures, farting and burping is seen as compliments to the chef for sure. Right. And then in others, it's not. So that's why we don't need to moralize it. We don't need to say, oh my God, you're so rude and that therefore you're a bad person. What we're trying to say is like, you can't sit with us and we're, we, are, we wear pink on Wednesdays, but you cannot sit with us. When you create a group, okay, and you're saying like your level of weirdness or rudeness doesn't fit in this bubble. We're not necessarily necessarily saying you're a bad person, but often people need to moralize a situation in order to justify moving away from people. Think about a breakup where you break up with someone and they're like, why are you breaking up with me? I'm a good person. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Oh my gosh, why'd you break up with her? She's such a good person. What does that have to do with anything? Oh my God, why'd you stop being friends with them? They're such a good person. What does that have to do with anything? But we think it has something to do with it because in our heads, we're like, how could you break up with someone that's a good person? Why wouldn't you want friends that are good people? Well, it's like maybe we're not vibing anymore. Good people don't always vibe, you know? The fart walk is deeper than that. The fart walk is healthy. I don't know what y'all are talking about, but I'm scared. It's not about people farting. I got tagged. Discord says, as someone who has a digestive health illness, this conversation makes me want to kill myself. I mean, yeah, right? But that's like you knowing your bubble, right? So many people have health issues. So many people got IBS. So many people out here having problems with their toots. You know what I mean? I don't think it changes the fact that like, it makes socializing more difficult, right? We can have feelings about things. We can say, hey, like, it, it really hurts my feelings the way people talk about X, Y, Z, right? And all of that can be real and valid. And you can also find a whole group of people on the planet that won't ever care that you fart. Like we just discussed, there are thousands of bubbles, billions of bubbles. You will find the right bubble that doesn't give a fuck that you fart, right? So it's like, whatever. And also it's the bubble you grew up in, right? Discord says both my parents have digestive issues, so farting is normal to me. Both my parents are clean freaks that think farting is very, very rude and you're not supposed to do it in public. I remember the day my dad made the decision not to fart anymore because when, when I was younger, like 20 years ago, when I was a very small kid, my dad would fart and he'd be like, that's so funny. And then he realized like, okay, not only is it rude, my mom hates it and finds it unsexy, the girls don't like it and it's not a vibe. And that's the truth. The truth is, is that I don't think it's sexy. My husband and I don't fart in front of each other. It's rude and it's gross. And honestly, I'm going to be less attracted to you if you do it. Like not that you're doing it on accident, but on purpose, like being rude, like putting it in my face, like putting me in the room, trapping me with the smell. Like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Fun story. My farm brother had to stop farting around his wife because she stopped having sex with him. If you want to get laid and you want to be seen as sexy, don't associate your... F okay. That is different than having medical issues. It's different than having... You know what? It's just like, why is that sexy? Like, why is it sexy? Like, hello. But at the same time, if you are a person who likes farts, you do think it's sexy... You're not afraid of being about being around somebody who's farting. Great. For every person that thinks farting is unsexy, there's a person who thinks it's sexy. Look at my OnlyFans DMs. People, people are out here buying Amaranth's fart jars. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about moralizing farting. Nobody fucking cares. Right? Every culture has a different relationship. If you're in a bubble where you're getting shamed for farting, move to a bubble where they don't shame you for farting. You know what I mean? Like, it's not objective. It's not, it's not about being a bad person or a good person. Farting's just gross. Now, if you fart and you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, nobody cares. But if you, I'm talking about people who do it on purpose, not people who have medical issues, not people that do it accidentally. 
I'm saying there's a whole bubble of, bubble of people that literally do it on purpose to torture the people in the room. Also, my brothers were in the military and the military soldiers would literally prank each other by trapping each other in close quarters and letting off the worst farts. We're not talking about people with medical issues. We're not even talking about people who accidentally fart when you hug them too hard. We're talking about motherfuckers that don't give a fuck and want to basically make everybody uncomfortable. Do not internalize what I'm saying as a thing that's about you unless you're in this category. I'm talking about this category of person. Okay? Yes, Marge, weaponized farts. Like weaponized incompetence, it is intolerable. Intolerable. Oh my God, Discord, I'm never going to your house. Can you guys literally not help your... Are you guys misunderstanding me? There's no way. You have... Are you in that bubble? Are you saying you've never gone to a person's house and never not farted in an appropriate space? What do you just like let ones rip in middle of dinner? Like, do you literally let your stinky ass fart just fill up the room at a get together? Do you guys not walk to the bathroom or go outside or something? Discord, are you fucking with me right now? I'm never going to your house. Are you talking to me? Are you seriously? Have you guys? I'm so sorry. What bubble is this? You're blowing my mind. Are you guys fucking with me right now? Are you saying when you go to your friend's house, you just sit there and fucking fart for everybody to smell and hear? Or are you saying you let ones off silently that don't smell and nobody knows it's happening? What are you saying? <laughs> what bubble is this? Tell me. I'm saying like, I can't imagine it. I can't imagine us like, you know what I mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> Brit says, be appropriate. Go to the closet. <laughs> Literally, go to the closet and fire. <laughs> this, this, this is too funny. Stop. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is so funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Discord said it was a joke. Okay, just checking. Whew, I was stop. I'm dying. I'm fucking dying. <laughs> Look, okay, holding in your farts, not great. But also, okay, you can't just be letting off stinkers at the dinner table. You know, go to the bathroom, go outside, make an excuse to go, you know, make a phone call and just like let them rip. Oh, so funny, bro. I'm dying. You guys fucking had me dying there for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Our case is control your assholes, people. Alice's IBS is a struggle. Shout out to my IBS girlies. That's hard, bro. That's hard, bro. Oh, fuck. I'm dying. Oh, damn. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Lexi says, this is a huge bubble pop for me. Me and my boyfriend don't really care about farts. We don't think it's sexy, but we're super indifferent about doing it in front of each other. I love that. So many couples completely indifferent to it. I fucking love that. Okay. That's great. Oh, you do you. You do you. Whew. Ripley says, where do you stand on blowing your nose in public? Bro, I hate being that girl that blows her nose on stream. I hate blowing my nose in general because it's so rude. It's so loud. But at the same time, like, it's better than, than it. It will drip down my face. Like, if I do not blow my nose, it will literally just drip down my face. Like, I'm constantly just draining. And I honestly, I need to go get, like, my septic chain or, fit, or examined. No, septic? No, sep deviated septum. Septum. Septic. <laughs> septum i need to get my like deviated septum check to see if i have one the doctor said i don't but i'm almost convinced i do because like all my siblings basically do so i'm like hello hello oh oh my god so funny bro who farts at the dinner table people bro people i see them i know them i got friends family people that just got no problem be farting over here people be wild bro but also like whatever like you know, I'm not going to moralize farting. I'm just going to say, don't be surprised when people don't want to be around a friend that like can't fucking control themselves or ruins the experience for other people. You know? Oh, bro. Oh, that's so funny. Hilarious. Okay. Do we get what I'm saying? I, you know, we covered that guy on stream. I was the Brittany Venti's boyfriend. 
And his whole audience was so rude. And I didn't want to make a focus video on him because like his audience is too like in their bubble. And I had to delete like so many of their comments because they were just like so negative. But like with no reason, like they just didn't get it. And they were like, you're misconstruing him. You're misunderstanding him. And I was like, cool. He's misunderstanding me. And you're misunderstanding me. And she, they're misunderstanding her. We're all just always misunderstanding each other. And then we're taking offense. You know, we're dealing with different, you know, um, cultural bubbles. And then we're taking offense. We're assuming everyone is out here just being rude on purpose when you're probably just autistic. Or everyone is like trying to be cruel to you when they're just trying to stand up for their own like values. Or everyone is just like, I, I know, I know, okay, I know. It's so interesting to me though, how like we cannot be introspective enough to realize like we're doing the same thing and then we have to ask ourselves, is this always just what we're gonna do? Is the same thing? Yes, humans repeat history. Like we're all just sitting here repeating history over and over and over again. And again, it's not about like, you know, Bill Mars, like the worst person in the world. Steve-O is the worst person in the world. They're probably just both two goodish people. I don't love Bill Maher, but you know what I mean. Goodish people who aren't going to do a collab because they can't make it, they can't figure out how to make it work. Okay. I'm in a weird time zone. And when people ask me to collab, what if I was like, only if you can do it on my schedule? Usually what I say is, hey, I'm in a time zone difference than you. It will be kind of complicated. I can do my best to try to meet a collab, but I also understand if my hours are crazy. Basically, I'm trying to be aware that of course it's inconvenient to ask me to do a collab with you when you know I'm six to nine hours ahead of you or depending on where you are in your time zone. So it's about that. It's like when I talk to people, I'm not perfect at it, but I do try to consider how they're going to receive this and then sometimes to a fault, honestly. Sometimes it's too like too much where I'm like almost giving them an excuse to cancel because I, I feel bad inconveniencing them. But it is amazing where people will meet you. P.S. I have a collab coming up next week. It will be really, really great. But, it you know, every time I boot, like I do these collabs and I'm trying to figure it out, we're literally, we have to compromise. And society is a really difficult time compromising. And also, it's also okay to say, I can't really compromise when it comes to this. Is that okay? And then, yes, of course it's okay. It's about boundaries. Instead of taking sides and saying, who's right, Bill Maher or Steve-O? I mean, I'm kind of shocked that Bill Maher would do that, but not really, but also just not my bubble. I would never think to choose smoking weed over having a great collab with a guest. But at the same time, like, Bill Maher is allowed to stand his ground and say, I'm not going to switch up my show for you. And Steve-O has the right to say, well, then I can't be on it, Right? there it is it's like if a religious person was like hey i, I want to come on your show but you tend to dress really immodestly could you dress more modestly so i can be on the show with you yeah i probably would i'll be honest with you i probably would because what do i care if a person wants to be on my podcast and let's say i always had my tits out and they're like hey i just feel like my viewers are going to watch this and they're not going to be able to watch it if your boobs are out because it's like against our religion and I want their people to watch the podcast, then of course, like I would just, it's just, it's good manners, everyone around. What's the big deal? You know what I mean? Like, what's the big deal? But I could see some people being like, no, I'm not doing that. Like if I was married to my wife and she and I did a podcast together and a religious person is like, I can come on your podcast, but you and your wife um, can't show any affection to one another, then I'd be like, nah. Like, you can't come on the podcast because that isn't just about me. That's an involving another person that is like my soulmate and the love of my life and somebody that I really respect. And if we did a podcast together and you couldn't be like your religion is so weird that you can't even see gay people being affectionate. Like, no, you can't come on the show. So even I have a line and I would say that that's like a part of rudeness um, um, maybe both people's ends, but also ultimately it's, I think, within reason. It is within reason to have a boundary that also in some way is brewed to another bubble. Maiden says it's just too much effort for them to understand each other, so it almost becomes a matter of practicality that they don't work together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. My head in real life on bed, my belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm 
just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth Dun, 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 dun.